friends, welcome to this daily video devotional here from Grand Blank United Methodist Church. Or if you're from another church watching this, we're grateful that you've been able to, to plug in and, and enjoy it with us. We're taking a look over the next few days at, at one piece of scripture, or at least parts of one piece of scripture. And, and this comes from uh, the Gospel of Luke chapter 4, where we find the temptation of Jesus by the devil in, in, in the wilderness. And so we're going to begin by reading this, and then over the next uh, two days, including, uh, not including today, uh, we're going to take a look at uh, the whole of it, uh, piece by piece. So it begins with this in chapter 4. Jesus returned from the Jordan River full of the Holy Spirit, and was led by that Spirit into the wilderness. There he was tempted for 40 days by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and afterward Jesus was starving. The devil said to him, since you are God's son, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus replied, it is written, people won't live only by bread. I think about in this passage a couple of things. The first thing is that, did you notice that it follows right after the baptism of Jesus when he's filled with the Holy Spirit? And it's that same Holy Spirit that then leads him into the wilderness. Now, what we know of God is that God does not lead us into problematic times, right? God does not push us toward evil. God does not push us toward temptation. But I wonder if there are times where the Holy Spirit does lead us into the wilderness. Throughout Scripture, we see the wilderness come up quite a bit. And it's not always a bad experience. It's, in fact, sometimes it's in those experiences of the wilderness that we learn the most, that we discover the most. Or maybe it's not so much that the Spirit leads us there, but when our life happens that way, when we end up taking that road into the wilderness, I, I believe that the Spirit goes with us. The Spirit walks with us and travels with us. And it's in those wilderness moments that we do discover something about God, something about ourselves. And we probably all have those experiences from time to time. But it's in that wilderness experience that at the end of it, Jesus experiences these temptations. And the devil sneaks up on Jesus when he's most vulnerable, at least in a way that I can relate to, is when he's hungry. And the scriptures even say he was starving, right? Jesus is starving, and that's when the, the devil comes in. I like to think that the devil often will come to us when we're most susceptible. Now, if you're thinking devil, red horns, tail at the back, that's it's not necessarily what I'm talking about. I think of the devil as a, a personification, a, a, an image that we give to the idea of evil. Evil meets us when we are most vulnerable. Temptation meets us when we're most vulnerable. And that's a hard reality, because it's when we're most vulnerable that we're most willing to say yes. And so the devil, evil, temptation, meets Jesus in the wilderness and offers this simple idea. Just go ahead and turn this stone into bread. And what does Jesus reply? People will not live only by bread. Maybe you've heard it put this way. Man does not live by bread alone. In a moment when he is so hungry, Jesus realizes that it's not the bread that's ultimately going to feed him. Sure, the, the bread that he could create would feed his belly. He would feel better. He would probably not be starving anymore. But really, the fullness that he's seeking is so much greater than that. And that's something that we see throughout Scripture too, isn't it? Jesus meets the woman at the well and he says, he asked me for water, and I will give you a water that, from a well, it will never run dry. It will quench your thirst. I'm not talking about actual water. 
but about a presence of God that, that really does quench our thirst for something more, our hunger for something more. Sometimes we're tempted to go after the bread, though, aren't we? It seems like that's going to be the easy fix. At least that would make things better. Now, now, to be honest, bread is good. There's nothing wrong with bread. Bread is an essential part of our living. Now, you've probably noticed I'm not using bread in a literal way, but a figurative way. Bread is absolutely important to us. And God understands that. But it's not the be-all, end-all. It's not the thing that's going to solve every problem in our lives. Jesus knows that. So what else do we live on if not just bread? We live on the love of God. We live on the support of, of others. We live on this thing called community that meets us. And, and, and community takes on so many different forms for different people. We live on the nourishment of, of justice the promise of peace. We, we live on the nourishment of God's grace that meets us where we are. And certainly bread. But I think like those who wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, Jesus knew that God would provide and that evil never really provides for us. And so when we might feel tempted, remember, we don't live on bread alone. Bread is good, but it's not everything. Amen.